Hi everyone, it's Mirik Abundance. Welcome to my 365 days from eating disorder, rec from eating disorder or quasi recovery to real recovery. Okay, let's start straight away with what I ate uh, a year ago when I was still in quasi recovery. I mean, you saw this, uh, it was not black coffee and I think it even was like, it looked like real coffee. So I was on and off with daring to drink real coffee, but I was still super sensitive to it, which I'm not anymore, and which is a real blessing. Um, and because I just love to, I just love the taste of coffee. Um, and I had a little bit of milk in there, which was not the full opposite of my eating disorder, but it was some kind of opposite and it was still better than nothing, right? Okay, you see here, you know, a huge bowl of fruit, a huge bowl, like this is a dish, like full, like these are salad bowls and stuff. And um, you know, just that volume makes me like, how could I even eat so much volume? And at that time I was looking at these types of things, you know, this was mental hunger. When you're looking to Instagram, looking at a picture of food, I keep telling you it's mental hunger. It means you are hungry. It's just, um, even like just as important as physical hunger and in your situation even more important like without the mental hunger i wouldn't have recovered with this i mean i love i would eat that anytime but i know that if i made these meals myself a very big part of my spare time would go into preparing food and so that for me for a long time was a no-no and still kind of is i try and really um avoid um, putting a lot of time in preparing food and you know I just want to let you know you can have the real pizza you can have the the real thing like that's if you only can have the healthy version of something it really tells you it tells your brain that anything else is not an option and is to be is to be feared you also saw that peanut butter and that huge pile of bananas i did not have a a problem in getting the calories in but i treated the minimum guide mini mod guidelines as a maximum and not as a minimum and that was the problem recovery doesn't happen by staying in your comfort zone yes i mean you know this is i show you um some insights from one week ago now um, these are just some screenshots I share because they will help you so much. You can totally transform your life in six months. Start today by doing something out of your comfort zone. Exactly. That's exactly how I went with it. You know, you see these little darings of mine. These are what got me to re-recovery in the end at some point in time. Um, so past me, so many fats. Ah, now me. Mmm, delicious. This completely summarizes how I feel about sandwiches now. You will also uh, see in the next videos more of how I prepare my food, like also sandwiches and stuff. Um, I actually am getting into recording more of that for you guys, so stay tuned. I've made a lot of mistakes in life, but I have to remember I was just doing the best I could at the time, considering the situation I was in and it was, wasn't always possible to know or make the right choice. Exactly. So. Don't beat yourself up for not finding, you know, this information also what I talk about, for example, on this channel earlier. I mean, now you have it and now you can go and make the right decision. You did not know that before. I didn't know it for 20 years, but you move forward. You know, I am moving towards what I want and I make my ambitions and hopes become true. And so, well, for me personally, as a Christian, it's not me who, you know, but we do have power with the type of decisions and especially with the actions we take. And so you, no one else is going to do it for you. The moving forward, the moving towards what you want. You are the one who has to do it and who can do it. When I feel connected to my body, I am never alone and I feel happy and alive. Well, I don't think that's, you know, the solution to everything, like as a Christian personally again, but when I feel connected to my body, I just want to say the first time I really felt connected to my body is, you know, ever since I have started real recovery, not questioning my body anymore, not questioning the mental anger, not questioning, like just really trusting my body and taking action um, on, yeah, based on that. 
I release my limiting beliefs to step into my inner power um, or into the power of Jesus, if you will. I release my limiting beliefs. For me, real recovery had and still has so much to do with um, letting go of the past, letting go of the ideals of the past, letting go of what other people think of you. The best weight you can lose is the weight of the opinion of other people and that's just how it is. Um, so this was kind of a, I, it was kind of a pumpkin pie oatmeal experiment because I wanted pumpkin, pumpkin pie but I did not have it at home. But this turned out really, really delicious guys. And don't forget, I do also eat normal cat and you're also going to see that in the next days, you know. I'm trying to record more of what I eat. I did not record a whole lot on that day, unfortunately. Um, so this is basically soy yogurt on that day. I think it was all normal yogurt, I don't know. Um, and you know, a lot of oats and then also I think cashews and you know, some nut butter in there. and dates and also sugar and I don't even know it anymore but it just turned out really really nice right I mean it looks delicious and it was delicious but I even now I find I try and eat not so much oatmeal even though I love it so much because I just find it is too close to the neural pathways you know it I cannot just like risk anything so here this is a picture of wine that i got sent also for my birthday still from my parents and i really love it it's something that i wouldn't have ingested for the last 10 years you know <laughs> kind of okay so this is these are tips to actually um stop counting or tracking your calories and this is exactly what i also do and you're also going to see you know how i go about it in the coming videos where i record more of more of this um just pause it and read through those because they are gold tough love from a dietitian first if you gain weight the second you eat more than 1200 1, calories okay now you're probably like, no, no, I actually know for a fact that I don't, but hear me out. Like, you have to gain weight, she said before. You probably needed to gain that weight. If that's happening, you gain weight the second you eat more than 1,200 calories, which is already way too low. Yeah. Uh, it probably means that your metabolic rate is too low. We can correct it, though, by taking in more food. Yes, I hold. Uh, yeah, I mean, and yes, if that comes with a little bit of weight gain at first, that's okay, but we gotta do it. And it's, it, that also applies to higher numbers, like 2000 or something. Second, it is a part of normal female adolescent growth to stay the same height but gain weight in your 20s. Did you hear me? That's a normal part of female adolescent growth. I actually learned this from a pediatrician. It's so important, guys. The only reason we don't talk about it so much is we focus on your growth from 2 to 20. We don't talk about 20 to 30. So true, right? But it is perfectly appropriate to stay the same height and gain weight in your 20s. And now that this coming thing is very important. I am only saying that because don't start the diet. Don't panic. Don't feel like you have to drop all of this weight if that's happened to you. And I feel like the 20s and also in the teenage, you know, when you start to gain weight, that's where a lot of people actually get into an energy deficit, be it consciously or unconsciously. And that's the problem, actually. Um, you know, because that is where um, anorexia genetics are activated when it happens or if it happens. And that's so sad, you know. Okay, let's get into... Um, on that night, we had dinner party, you know, with uh, a connect group from our church, and I just love being there. And we had potato grat huh? gratin, I don't know how to pronounce it. And I had some of the vegan version, and but much more of the non-vegan version, which was with, which was with bacon and cream and cheese and all of that stuff. Um, and then they surprised me, <laughs> and David served the birthday cake. It's David. Well, it's a vegan one actually from Aldi uh, a cherry uh, crumble 
cherry chocolate crumble it was actually and I got the biggest piece like quarter of the whole cake um, which I just love to be so spontaneous and it didn't even come to my mind or that this could now be too many calories or something or that this was not planned so we have to kind of make up for it and compensate somewhere else no like the meals before and the meals after were it's just you know there's no too much of calories anymore um, I also had uh, like my friend is a barista expert let's say barista master and this was a decaf with a regular whole milk I think like his favorite one and I actually emptied the cake because it was not eaten all and so I had the whole rest of it the whole leftovers and I just love to be able to do that and your body is not a math calculation machine it's about you know life it's about your metabolism and you being healthy on the mental the soul the spirit and the physical level um body you know body mind and soul it's so so important and eating processed foods will not um you know it does not equal um weight gain or eating unplanned foods even like tracking calories like this is a prison that you are keeping yourself in and i have kept myself in for 10 like real tracking like for 10 years and like counting calories roughly estimating it for 20 years and i wish i could take back the years of my life like seriously so Kudos to you that you are watching my videos and also that you are going to be able to read, um, you know, no, not actually my translation, but you can go and read the original from Tabitha Farah, her book, which was basically my manual for my personal recovery. And I can only, only, only recommend it. The first um, two I read and I will read the other ones as well and also translate the other ones into German. Okay, so let's get into a question from Chaos Queen on my German channel. Hey Miri, do you watch and follow other German accounts or can you recommend some? You say, because you say it is the eating disorder, you know, who wants to watch them? And so, I mean, first of all, I guess I'm going to just answer it like in terms of if I know English accounts that I can recommend because what do you guys have you know here on my English channel it doesn't make any sense for me to recommend German channels right like yeah so I will talk on like in the video version on my German channel I will talk about the German account part so I mean okay straight off of the bat do you say that in English um I will say Tabitha Farah <laughs> <laughs> hands down uh, Becky Freestone Emily Spencer Spency if I try and remember that I actually put those names into the description box for you guys um, and Gains with Serena these are hands down the four most helpful YouTube and Instagram resources that I have come across because I oh and also um, Hat did beat this and also her mom's um, Hat's mom I think it's called um, I think these five are they really promote like there is no maximum and it's like this radical aggressive kind of seeming approach that I also practiced which if I had done it any less radical, I would not be here right now. Like uh, the more extreme it felt, the, the faster I got forward with my real recovery. And now I feel very close to full, fully recovered, but I am not there. Like I still have work to do, but I will talk about that in other videos. So these are spontaneously what comes to my mind. Um, and now the question if I watch them um, so not for myself anymore like I can actually I I am so much able to give myself the permission at any point in time to really just do it I give myself permission to eat unconditionally 
as much as I want, whatever I want, um, and when I want. <laughs> and so I don't, like I don't watch them in terms of I, I need them. But what I do do, I do follow uh, some of them, uh, or for example, I rewatch some of Tabitha Farah's videos because I just, it's part of my work time, kind of, uh, in a sense, so I can give information forward to you guys because sometimes it's helpful. You, I, I just, I, it's helpful for me to have some base, you know, as a screenshot or something, so then I can actually react to that for you guys and give my opinions and my comments on that because I know that what I say in these videos helped me so much to actually get into my personal real recovery. And so I just, um, what you see in my screenshots from one week ago is actually stuff that I think it's very valuable for me to talk about that so you guys um, <laughs> get something from it. Um, you say also I'm actually looking for some very specific video from Tabitha Farah. Um, that's why I actually go through her videos sometimes, but just very, very slowly. Um, but basically, it's a very small portion of what I watch. Like, it's not... And I also don't watch it for me to have permission to eat. It's just something... Like, part of my work and in my spare time, I don't watch these kinds of, kinds of things. I... Um, that's just so, so nice uh, for me to... Like, I have better things to do, like singing and recording singing stuff and... You know spending time with friends and we're also decluttering our flats and all of that stuff um spending time with my hubby of course <laughs> first thing on the list and so the last thing you say is because you say it's the eating disorder and so no like please let me know where i say this because no i'm not saying that it is the eating disorder that makes you look at it but what I say is, and what I mean is, and I hope I didn't, you know, I hope I didn't put it a wrong way or something. So if so, I'm sorry. Just let me know where. Um, what I'm saying is that it is the mental hunger that makes you do this. And if you find yourself looking at these things and, you know, consuming recovery content and comparing your recovery to others and watching other people eat and talking about recovery all the time, then that is your sign that you are hungry. You are mentally hungry. Your body and your brain, they are starving and they make you be interested so much in this type of content. It's not normal, that's so important to know. And what you need to do is take action and eat. And so for me, if I watch something now that's also very crucial, it's not because I'm mentally hungry, because I am eating. Anytime I'm thinking of something, you know, I will eat. The problem is there when you watch this type of stuff and you're not eating and you're not actually giving it full permission. You're not actually eating with zero restriction. You know, it could be a sign that you are actually, um, Yes, eating more than before, but still have some kind of rules. And I think we have to get to the point where there are no rules at all anymore. And so, no, it's not the eating disorder. It's the mental hunger. And for me, it's just, if I look at something like that, it's just part of me making my videos for you guys. And it does not um, interfere with my recovery in any type of way. And yeah, I hope that makes sense. And I will see you in tomorrow's video. Give this a thumbs up. I would be very glad about it. Bye.